Now that spring training has started, we're hearing a lot of news out of Peoria and out of Mariners camp about different aspects of this team, including what's going on with Gregory Santos, as well as maybe trying to sign Matt Chapman. We're going to talk about all that in this video, what we're hearing, what Ryan Divish has been talking about, so on and so forth. And we're going to start with Santos here, who we knew was coming off of an injury at the end of 2023, but it turns out they're going to be slow playing him a little bit in spring training, and it's not the elbow injury like we thought. So first, Ryan Divish said Gregory Santos will be a little behind in spring training. He's coming off an injury from last season. You won't see him throwing off the mound right away. Now, we kind of expected this. Again, Chris Getz with the White Sox had talked about that a little bit. We all knew that was coming. But it turns out that Santos isn't dealing with elbow issues, according to Ryan Divish. He felt some soreness in the lat and terrace major area after throwing a bullpen here in Peoria. Mariners decided to dial it back and slow play him this spring. Honestly, in my opinion, that is better than what we had originally thought because obviously elbow injuries are scary, especially for someone who throws as hard as Santos does. So if he's just dealing with something in his lat, okay. If the Mariners do just give him a little bit more time off here in the spring, maybe work him out a little slower than they would have otherwise, then sure, Gregory Santos can hopefully be there by opening day ready to go. But honestly, I look at this as good news, although I can see why some people don't think it's good news. Nonetheless, we all knew that Santos was injured already. He just isn't as injured, in my opinion, as we all thought he was. Cool. Now, when it comes to trades, we know that Jerry Depoto and co. love to make them. And apparently, Gabe Spire is one of the Mariners' most asked about relievers in trades this offseason. A lefty that the Mariners turned into one of the best pitchers in that bullpen last year in 2023. And I find this very, very interesting. Now, this was again from Ryan Divish. He said Gabe Spire was one one of the most asked about relievers from teams wanting to make trades this offseason with a very blurry video thanks a lot twitter for compressing the video of gabe spire throwing a bullpen and it makes sense gabe spire had a really really good year in 69 nice games he had a 3.79 era 54 and two-thirds innings pitch struck out 64 hitters and had an era plus of 107 and you can see on baseball savant why gabe spire is just so sought after look at this chase rate Nobody had a higher chase rate in baseball than Gabe Spire in 2023. He is a big part of this Mariners bullpen in this upcoming year. And we can understand why the Mariners didn't trade him. I'm glad they didn't. He's the best lefty out there. But I also understand why a lot of teams wanted to trade for him. Also from Ryan Divish, he went on the Lookout Landing podcast. And shout out to Switch for tweeting this. He said, on the Lookout Landing podcast, Ryan Divish seems to point out that DePoto and Hollander do not have a contract beyond 2024. This season was obviously important, but it just became a whole lot more important. I expect them to be aggressive at the deadline. Now, I don't want to dive too far into this topic because we are going to talk about it more with Joe on the Hit It Here podcast coming out on Monday. But I think it's interesting to hear that with everything that John Stanton has put up against DePoto and Hollander, that this is now the last year of their contract. So if this season doesn't go the way that John Stanton thinks it needs to go, then they are probably gone. Let's say the Mariners don't make the playoffs this year. Are both DePoto and Hollander gone at that point? I don't know. I think that looking at how they handled this offseason, given all of their restraints, I think they did an amazing job, even though John Stanton wasn't allowing them to do the job they needed to do. So I think that they deserve a little bit more leadway, but I also agree that maybe they wait until next offseason to offer them an extension. And with that being said, do if you're DePoto or you're Hollander and your contract's up next year, do you stay with this team after how you've been treated by John Stanton? It's just food for thought. I would really like to see Stanton give a contract extension to DePoto and Hollander for at least two, three more years, just to really see this rebuild, not even a rebuild, just to see all the prospects that they have culminated in the minor leagues kind of make headway in the majors and see what this team can really do i would like to see that happen if it doesn't jerry was here for almost 10 years one playoff appearance i mean to be fair that is like you know better than half of the other gms in mariners history but nonetheless i would understand why depoto and hollander would be gone and i think that if this season goes poorly they're definitely on the hot seat and now the big one in regards to everything that i just said about john stanton being a pos because he is let's now talk about the fact that ryan divish says there have been internal conversations in mariners front offices and whatnot about adding matt chapman here's a clip from the brock and salk show i'm not going to play the whole thing because it's kind of like two and a half minutes long but just listen to what divish has to say for Chapman is pretty dry, which maybe could lower his value enough that you come in at the end and say, hey, this guy puts us over the top. He solidifies the one position of vulnerability. Do you think that could happen? I mean, I don't see why it can't. And I don't think that 
he should I don't think that they should like leave it off the table I, I know they've discussed it internally I thought you know it's amazing it's basically a question of what what Boris is willing to give or give into you know he's been very very rigid and usually he wins in the end but Maybe at some point, Matt Chapman doesn't want to go two weeks into spring training and not have a home. And if you're the Mariners, if you can get him on a, you know, I don't think he's going to sign a one-year deal, but if you can get him on a three-year deal, you know, and, and it's it's within range, maybe that's when Jerry DePoto goes to John Stanton and says, hey, look, we've done a lot based on what you wanted us to do and the, the limitations you put on us. But here's a guy right here that finishes our lineup, and we go from maybe a uh, a solid team with everything goes right to you know you remove some of the what if happens or what if injury happens if you add him i mean chap is not the world's greatest hitter anymore maybe he could be so the idea here would obviously be that matt chapman would be replacing luis arias and josh rojas over there at third base as an everyday third baseman for the seattle mariners in a vacuum it's all right but with that being said He's no better than a Eugenio Suarez was in 2023. In fact, after April, Chapman posted like an 84 WRC+. Gino was better last year than Matt Chapman, no question about it. And sure, Matt Chapman hits the ball really hard, but he's not going to be worth the amount of money that he's asking for. Chapman is a Boris client, so that's one of the reasons why this is taking so long. He was also offered a qualifying offer, so if a team was to sign him, they'd lose a draft pick in the process. Is Chapman the defensive whiz he used to be? No. But if we look at his statistics, we'll kind of see where we think his market should be gauged at. We'll also look at what CBS had to say, because CBS is kind of crazy. Yeah, so CBS had Matt Chapman at five years, $150 million, $30 million a year. CBS, are you stupid? It's not going to happen. In 2023, in 140 games, Chapman hit 240, 330, 424 with a 108 OPS+. Plus. He had 17 home runs with 54 RBI. He struck out 165 times. He has a career strikeout rate of 27.2%. It was 28.4 in 2023. Matt Chapman strikes out a lot, guys. He's just like Gino Suarez in that regard. The one thing that Matt Chapman does have here is he hits the ball really hard. He hit it harder than anybody else. His hard hit percentage in 2023 was in the 100th percentile. His barrel percentage was in the 98th percentile. His average exit velocity was in the 98th percentile and his chase rate was in the 94th percentile. So when he strikes out, he's not swinging at pitches outside of the strike zone, but still, he is striking out quite a bit. The fact of the matter is that Matt Chapman hits the ball really freaking hard, but it doesn't culminate at all to success on the field. Sure, his previous two years before 2023, he hit 27 home runs, but that was a 116 and a 100 even OPS+. Plus. And for the amount of money that you're going to have to pay Matt Chapman, you should have either A, kept a Eugenio Suarez, or B, spend a little bit of extra money and go out there and sign Cody Bellinger. Not only is Bellinger a better fit for this team due to his positional versatility, but he also is younger. He's going to cost more, yes, and I think that he's a better fit for the ballpark than Matt Chapman is. So overall, I just don't understand why people want Matt Chapman so bad. If you're going to spend the $15 million plus that it's going to take to get you Matt Chapman, go spend some extra money, go get Blake Snell, go get uh, Cody Bellinger, go get someone else or save that money and save it for the season and go get somebody at the deadline when someone's hurt or somebody's not performing the way they need to be. I believe in the platoon of Rojas and Urias a hell of a lot more than I do on an aging Matt Chapman who's going to cost you four times as much. And sure, maybe people are just playing matchmaker and saying, oh, the Mariners, their likely worst position is third base. Well, let's just fill it with Matt Chapman. Sure, that's possible, but the optics of it are not good. He is no better than Gino was last year. You should have just kept Gino. Obviously, we all know Gino. We love Gino. Gino, 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 Gino. Let me know your thoughts on signing Matt Chapman in the comments down below. And if you guys want to hear more about this Mariners offseason, go ahead and check out this video on the screen now. I appreciate you guys watching this one and go Mariners.